anyone else just work their ass off for like the last three or four years for like a college degree and now you have a job that you hate and you still can't afford life you can sit here and you can call gen z lazy all you want but i've been working my tail end off just to barely make it by and i can't even support myself on a salary of just under 60k like make it make sense it is hard out here welcome to or welcome back to my channel my name is Deshawn and this is Lush Uncut first of all before I continue with this video I want to send out a special thank you to everyone that has been supporting my channel despite my absence this is my first video of the new year and I know what you're thinking Lashawn, it's March well January and February were unexpectedly rough for me I had a couple things happen in my personal life and it has been taking me a little back little bit to kind of get back on track but now Nevertheless, we are here and I am so excited to be back on YouTube, um, but I have been noticing a ton of new subscribers and a lot of comments on my videos, so I just wanted to take this time off to say thank you before moving on with today's video. On today's video, we are going to be talking about the economy. Now, if you don't know, now you know we are in some particularly tough economic um, times. Costs of living are up across the boards with housing, um, groceries, gas, insurance, clothing, makeup, hair, <laughs> um, electricity. Everything is so much more expensive than it was a couple of years ago. And of course, everyone has been feeling the impact of the rise in cost of living especially Generation Z and Millennials. And like they do with everything, they have taken to the internet to voice their complaints. I cannot stand how the news has been dogging Gen Z and calling them lazy for not wanting to work a nine to five for the rest of their lives. Let me put it in perspective for everybody who's a little confused here, okay? I work five days out of the week, 40 hours a week, okay? I do not make enough to live on my own. I would not make enough to pay rent, water, electric, and eat all by myself. I would not be capable of doing that. 20 years ago when you were getting started, you could live on your own. The Roman Empire is the fact that when I was growing up in the early to mid 2000s, my dad only worked one job and my mom was a stay at home mom for 90% of my life. And we were really lucky and my dad made about 100K at his job and that was enough to support a family of four on seven acres of land plus build our own house. And now that I'm an adult living on my own, I'm single, I have no kids, I can barely even afford rent. Their mortgage payment was 790. I make 60 percent of what my dad made or in the early 2000s and he was supporting a family of four on his solo salary of 100k and i can't even support myself on a salary of just under 60k no one else just work their ass off for like the last three or four years for like a college degree and now you have a job that you hate and you still can't afford life and you're still fucking miserable and you can't pay any of your bills and you can't live in the house that you imagine and you just feel lied to because you thought that if you just went to college and got a degree you'd be able to afford a house and like things that make you happy but yet you're still barely can afford groceries okay so i have a couple of points here that i want to offer as just a little bit of encouragement or advice to someone who might be watching this video and feeling exactly what these young ladies express number one stop complaining it is okay to acknowledge what we are all dealing with, but constantly complaining and hyper fixating on the problem, even in your day to day, even when you're going to the grocery store, even when you're going to the gas pump and you are faced directly with your financial struggles, complaining constantly about it is not really going to help and it really does not foster a change in your environment. No, how, no matter how much you yell and cry about a problem, it is not going to automatically resolve result in that problem being solved. So as therapeutic as complaining can be, it is not helpful. So try to decrease your complaining and stop being so much on the defense with this problem and start going on the offense, right? Which leads to my second point, which is to get in a Innovative. Listen, times like this create space for people who are going to put in the extra work to get creative, right? To use the, the tools that they have to, to, I don't even know exactly how to explain it, but to be more entrepreneurial, to be more creative, to um, try something new, to take more risk, especially if you are single with no kids, you can be a lot more risky than people who are not single and who have children. Take some risk and take the time out really to push yourself and take bold actions. You have to go on the offense with this because constantly be 
being on the complaining defense really is just going to make you more anxious, more frustrated, and more upset about your situation. And I feel like this is something that conservatives are also not telling these young kids. You have to get innovative, okay? When you see everybody else is just sitting there complaining, you take this opportunity to say, you know what? Yes, it sucks. We all know it sucks. But what am I going to do about it? You have to take the control out of these like politicians and these government bureaucrats and these major companies that you feel like it's all against you and put it back into yourself. You have autonomy, okay? We currently at least live in a country that still rewards hard work. So take that and put it into your creative ideas, put it into your ambition, put it into your passions and make something of yourself and make something of your life. <laughs> Do not make stupid mistakes, okay? And obviously if me and I'm sure you who, you know, are watching this had a time machine and was to go back and not take out, you know, student loans, we probably would. I know I would. However, that is a mistake that I cannot undo. But what I can do is not make more financially, um, it was a word, stupid mistakes and, and, and make better choices. Don't get influenced into making bad financial choices. What I am talking about is the consumer culture that we have fostered through influencing and YouTube um, personalities and, and TikTok and everyone's always trying to sell you something. They're just trying to sell, sell you the $40 water bottle, aka a Stanley Cup. They're trying to sell you that super fresh new white couch that costs upwards to $1,500. They try to sell you these, you know, these sparkling ap apartments where everything is white and clean and fresh. And you're like, oh my God, I want that. So you're going to go ahead and rent an apartment that you cannot afford just so that you can look like the people who you're following online. Do not do that. Live below your means. Make good financial decisions. I had to come um, to terms with cutting back on Starbucks um, recently. I was spending at least, I want to say about $30 to $40 a week on Starbucks. When you add that up, that's about $200 a month. That is about the same as like a couple of bills that I have. And I was like, there's no reason for me to be spending this much money on Starbucks. Mind you, I have a Keurig machine in my kitchen. So I had to reel it in. I was like, you know what, LaShawn, you're going to have to skip out on the chai lattes. Okay. I know it's hard because it's hard, but you have to make better financial decisions. Those little purchases add up. Okay. And there's plenty of times where I am watching some of my favorite YouTubers and they talk about a product that's, um, really good or they show me an outfit and I'm like, oh my God, I really want it. But I think to myself, one, do I need it? Most of the time the answer is no. Do I have something that could um, serve the same function as this product that this person is selling me? Most of the time that answer is yes. I have fallen in love with thrifting since I started living on my own. I am trying my darndest to make better financial decisions, okay? So don't go rent the $1,500 ap apartment and $1,500 is about 50% of your income. That is not what you do. Take back control and use that control to make better decisions. Okay. It is not hopeless. You still have time. You still have a future. No matter how much debt you have, no matter what your current circumstances are, you can't, you know, go back in the, in the past and make different decisions, but you can control what you do in the now and what you do in the future. One of the biggest um, fight I think we're all facing right now is the fight to keep our hope and our faith alive. There is a lot of not just economic, but just social um, chaos. And there's just so much going on. Like I like I said earlier, I have not been on YouTube, but I definitely have been keeping up with the news. And I see all that's going on. It's a lot. It is exhausting and it's overwhelming. And it can cause you to question your future, to question um, whether or not you should try to even, you know, give yourself a better future. But do not give up hope. Do not give into hopelessness, okay? It is not the solution. You have to fight to keep hope alive. I think um, my overall message for this video, and I, which is kind of what I really wanted to talk about, is not giving up that hope, making good decisions, um, getting innovative, get creative, work hard, and um, yeah, I think I think that's all that I have to say about that's all I have to say about that. I hope this was encouraging to someone. Um, if not, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> 
but that's it i actually wanted to add a verse at the end of this video i know i know i know but there's a verse that i feel like goes quite well with this um with what i just talked about and it is in the book of esther now if you're not a christian and you want to click off now don't do it jesus is watching in the book of esther um if you don't know the story behind that basically some guy was trying to destroy Esther's people. Um, she was a Jew and they were threatening to basically destroy the Jews. And Esther got, you know, caught favor with the king and she was in the palace. And um, she basically used her role to help her people out. Um, and one of the scriptures in that um, that book is, I think it's, I don't know what chapter it is, but it's verse 14. I'm going to get the proper whatever, and put it down here. And it says, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. And you know, and you, and who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Okay. And the main line in that scripture that I want to highlight is for such a time like this. A lot of us on the conservative right like to look at the past and say, oh, things are so much better back then. And not just conservatives, but I think everyone in general likes to kind of look in the past and be like, oh my God, I was born in the wrong generation. Um, you know, the generation before me did this and now I'm in this tough situation. You were placed on this earth, okay, intentionally by an intentional God for such a time like this. It might seem as if all of this chaos is, you know, just kind of happening, but God knew it was going to happen and he decided that you should, you should kind of sort of be a, a part of it. So take comfort in the fact that God doesn't make mistakes, okay? So if you were born in this generation, it means that he has equipped you with the skills and the perseverance to be able to still be successful no matter how chaotic and impossible um things may seem and